Welcome to Kingdoms, where all your nerdy dreams come true. We are playing some CDH today, and it will be a little bit different than our regular game. First off, we have one of our samurai patrons, Matthias, playing with us as one of their patron perks. Second, unfortunately we didn't record the audio correctly, but it was such a great game, we wanted to try narrating this game and see how it turns out. A shout out to Playing With Power as we are emulating their editing style with our show today. If you enjoy the videos that come from Kingdoms, you want to help us grow and become part of the community, go to patreon.com slash kingdoms TV after this episode and we'd love to have you join us. If you've been on the fence or think you might join us in the future, consider joining now as there will be some extra bonuses to anyone that has been a patron before 2023. We have a lot of cool things coming and we're super thankful for those that have supported us so far. All right, for our games today, we have Ben playing the first sliver with a starting hand of Polluted Delta, Lotus Petal, Demonic Consultation, Elves of Deep Shadow, Miscast, Ragavan Nimble Pilferer, and Ad Nauseam. Bryce is playing Tassiger the Golden Fang with a starting hand of Flooded Strand, Gemstone Caverns, Mystic Remora, Tainted Pact, Wishclaw Talisman, Fierce Guardianship, and Toxrule the Corrosive. Carlos is playing Urza Lord High Artificer with a starting hand of two islands, Soul Ring, Counterspell, Belay, Negate, and Trinisphere. And Matthias is playing Najila the Blade Blossom, with a starting hand of Exotic Orchard, Elves of Deep Shadow, Mystic Remora, Phantasmal Image, Snap, Rhystic Study, and Ad Nauseam. Game 1. Starting us off, Bryce has a pregame action and plays Gemstone Caverns, exiling Fierce Guardianship. Ben draws for turn, plays Polluted Delta, tracks it to play Overgrown Tomb. Ben takes two to untap it, taps for green, and casts Elves of Deep Shadow. He then plays Lotus Petal, sacrifices it to cast Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer, and then shuffles his library. Bryce draws for his turn, taps Gemstone Caverns for blue to cast Mystic Remora. He plays Flooded Strand and passes the turn. Carlos draws for turn, plays an island, taps it to cast Soul Ring. Without paying for Mystic Remora, Bryce draws a card. Carlos pays two for Grim Monolith. Without paying for Mystic Remora, Carlos pays three to cast Trinisphere. Bryce draws again and the turn moves to Matthias. Matthias draws, plays Exotic Orchard and passes the turn. Ben draws for turn. Attacks Bryce for two with Ragavan, creates a treasure token, and Bryce exiles the top card of his library. It is a Noxious Revival. Ben plays Hollowed Fountain, taking two damage, taps both of his lands and the elves, taking additional damage, and casts Noxious Revival for three mana because of Trinisphere. The Noxious Revival targets Lotus Petal, and Ben puts it on top of his library. He doesn't pay for the Mystic Remora trigger, and Bryce draws a card and passes the turn. At the end of turn, Bryce cracks Flooded Strand for an Underground Sea. On Bryce's turn, he pays for the Mystic Remora's Communal of Upkeep, draws, and plays City of Brass, and passes the turn. Carlos untaps all but Grim Monolith and draws. He plays an Island and casts Urza, Lord High Artificer. He gets a Construct token and passes the turn. Matthias draws, has nothing to do because of the Trinisphere, and discards Elves of Deep Shadow and passes the turn. Ben untaps and draws, attacks Bryce again for two damage with Ragavan Nimble Pilfer, and reveals a command tower. Ben creates another treasure and passes the turn. Bryce untaps, lets the Mystic Remora go, draws and plays a tropical island. He then casts Tassiger the Golden Fang, delving for three and paying three mana, and then passes. Carlos untaps, draws, and taps all of his land plus the construct for a blue mana using Urza's ability. Carlos activates Urza's second ability, paying 5 and shuffling his library, and then revealing the top card, which is a Chain of Vapor. He then decides to cast it for free, targeting Tassiger. Bryce then sacrifices his City of Brass to copy the spell, targeting Trinisphere. Ben responds by tapping all of his mana and treasures to cast Ad Nauseam. Carlos taps the Trinisphere using Urza's ability. 
Ad nauseum resolves, Ben revealing, Food Chain, Chain of Vapor, Marsh Flats, Extract, Bloodstain Mire, Command Tower, Thassa's Oracle, A Forest, Soul Ring, Eternal Scourge, Breeding Pool, Scalding Tarn, Enlightened Tutor, Gataxian Prove, Mist Hollow Griffin, Mox Diamond, Demonic Tutor, Rejuvenating Springs, Flooded Strand, Limb Duel's Vault, Mana Crypt, Mystical Tutor, Chrome Mox, Mnemonic Betrayal, Brainstorm, Underworld Breach, City of Brass, Lion's Eye Diamond, Undergrowth Stadium, Vampiric Tutor, Misty Rainforest, Birds of Paradise, and Avacyn's Pilgrim. Going down to a total of four life. Carlos uses his blue from Trinosphere and plays Sensei's Dividing Top and then moves to combat, attacking Ben for one and passing the turn. Matias untaps and draws and uses his Orchard to cast Mystic Remora and passes the turn. Ben untaps and draws, playing Mana Crypt, Rejuvenating Springs, and taps for two blue to cast Thassa's Oracle. Carlos responds by tapping the top to draw a card and putting it on top of his library. Ben taps for black to cast a demonic consultation. Matias draws a card for Mystic Remora, hoping for an answer, but it is not, and Ben wins the game. One of the underrated parts of CDH is that not everyone always makes the optimal plays, and so things can really turn out a lot different than you expect. For game two, everyone is playing the same commanders, with Bryce going first with Rejuvenating Springs, Lotus Petal, Mana Crypt, Deathrite Shaman, Mystical Tutor, and Mystic Remora in hand. Carlos's hand has an Island, Blast Zone, Everflowing Chalice, Mana Crypt, Codex Shredder, Sensei's Divining Top, and Counterspell. Matias' starting hand has a Blood Crypt, Rejuvenating Springs, Mana Crypt, Demonic Consultation, Veil of Summer, Eldritch Evolution, and Opposition Agent. Ben has a starting hand of Command Tower, Elves of Deep Shadow, Swan Song, Worldly Tutor, Plunge into Darkness, Eternal Scourge, and Rhystic Study. Game 2. Bryce goes first and draws playing Rejuvenating Springs and Mana Crypt to cast Felwar Stone. He then plays Lotus Petal and Mystic Remora. Using Lotus Petal, he then casts Death Rite Shaman and passes the turn. Carlos draws and plays an island as well as a Mana Crypt without paying for Mystic Remora. Bryce draws a card. Carlos then plays Everflowing Chalice without paying for Mystic Remora. Bryce draws a card. Carlos plays Sensei's Divining Top and passes the turn. Matias draws and plays Blood Crypt and a Mana Crypt as well without paying for Mystic Remora. Bryce draws a card. Matias uses the mana to cast Najila the Blade Blossom. He passes the turn to Ben. Ben draws and plays Command Tower, and then plays Elves of Deep Shadow. Bryce tops Felwar Stone at end of turn to cast Mystical Tutor to find Ad Nauseam. He then shuffles and puts the spell on top and untaps for his turn. Bryce rolls for Crypt, doesn't take any damage. He draws a card and attacks Ben for one. He then taps his mana to cast Astral Cornucopia with one counter and passes the turn. At end of turn, Carlos taps one to look at the top three of his deck and then untaps and rolls for Crypt and doesn't take any damage. He draws and plays an island and casts Urza, Lord High Artificer. Urza's ability triggers, getting Carlos a Construct and Carlos passes the turn. Matias untaps, rolls for Crypt, doesn't take damage and draws. He plays Rejuvenating Springs and attacks Ben with Najila. This triggers Najila's ability, sending a tapped warrior token also at Ben for 4 total damage. He then passes the turn. Ben untaps and draws, plays Wooded Foothills, cracks it, and gets Breeding Pool. Taking 2 damage from the Breeding Pool, he taps everything to play Rhystic Study. He doesn't pay for the Mystic Remora, Bryce draws a card, and Ben passes the turn. Bryce lets Remora go and then draws for turn, plays Verdant Catacombs, and cracks it for Underground Sea and rolls for Crypt and doesn't take any damage, then casts Ad Nauseam. Carlos plays Mana Drain, targeting the Ad Nauseam, paying one for Rhystic Study. Bryce taps his Shaman to remove Wooded Foothills from the game to get a blue and casts Swan Song, targeting Mana Drain. He does not pay for Rhystic, Ben draws, Matias casts Deflecting Slot without paying for Rhystic, Ben draws, and changes the target of Swan Song to Ad Nauseam. Ad Nauseam is countered by Swan Song, Mana Drain no longer has a target, the Swan Song resolves, Bryce gets a 2 2 bird token, the Mana Drain fizzles, and Bryce passes the turn. Carlos untaps and rolls for Crypt. He doesn't take damage, draws for turn, he taps 5 mana to use Urza's second ability, reveals an island, plays the island for turn, moves to combat, attacking Ben with his construct, dealing 4 damage, and passes the turn. Before the turn ends, Matias casts Opposition Agent. Matias untaps, draws for turn, plays Godless Shrine, and takes 3 damage from the mana Crypt. 
He then casts Elves of Deep Shadow, paying the one, and then attacks Ben with an Ajila and one warrior token. Najila's ability triggers, sending two more attacking tokens at Ben. Matthias then passes the turn. Ben draws and plays Verdant Catacombs. He then taps for green to cast Avicen's Pilgrim and passes the turn. Bryce untaps, rolls for Crypt, and takes three damage. He draws and plays Chrome Mox, exiling Force of Negation. Tapping the Underground Sea and delving for the rest, Bryce plays Tassiger without paying for the Rhystic Study. He then plays Windfall without paying for the Rhystic Study, and Ben draws again. In response, Ben plays Swan Song, which Bryce counters with Stubborn Denial. Windfall resolves, Bryce discards Cyclonic Rift, Carlos discards Counterspell, Isochron Scepter, Codex Shredder, and Blast Zone. Matthias discards Veil of Summer, Demonic Consultation, and Eldritch Evolution. Ben discards Flusterstorm, Brain Freeze, Food Chain, Limdul's Vault, Plunge into Darkness, Worldly Tutor, Eternal Scourge, and Marsh Flats. Ben had 8 cards in hand, so everyone draws 8 cards. Bryce plays a Bayou and taps it to play Mana Vault without paying for Rhystic Study. Moves to combat and attacks Matthias with a 2-2 bird. Carlos pays one after combat to look at the top three of his library using Sensei's Divining Top and then untaps for turn. He rolls for Crypt and takes three damage, draws and plays Inventor's Fair, and casts Jeweled Amulet for zero, not paying for Rhystic Study. Ben draws and Carlos plays Aether Spellbomb, not paying for Rhystic Study, and taps to use Urza's ability. He reveals a Mana Vault, casts it for free without paying for Rhystic Study, Ben draws, and then Carlos uses Divining Top to look at the top three of his library. He then moves to combat and attacks Bryce for seven with the Construct. Bryce doesn't block, takes seven damage, and Carlos passes the turn. Matthias untaps and rolls for Mana Crypt, doesn't take damage. He then plays Arid Mesa and cracks the Arid Mesa. In response, Bryce plays his own Opposition Agent. After it resolves, Matthias taps his Godless Shrine and casts Swords to Plowshares on Bryce's Opposition Agent. The Opposition Agent is exiled, Bryce gains 3 life. Matthias then cracks Arid Mesa to get a Temple Garden, pays 2 to have it come in play untapped. Paying 4, he then plays Toski, Bearer of Secrets, without paying for Rhystic. He attacks Carlos with Najila and 7 Warrior Tokens. Carlos uses the Spell Bomb to bounce Toski, blocks Najila with Urza, and takes 7 damage. Matthias passes. Ben untaps, draws, pays 2 to cast Gilded Drake, targeting Opposition Agent. Free from the Agent, he plays a Windswept Teeth, cracking both Verdant Catacombs, and Windswept Teeth, taking a damage each. He gets Overgrown Tomb and Stopping Ground, untapped, taking another 4 damage. He taps the Stomping Ground for red and casts Gamble. He places his tutored card in his hand, and Matthias chooses a random card for Ben to discard. It's an Abrupt Decay. Ben then taps for green and casts Arbor Elf. At end step, Ben discards Gemstone Caverns, Forbidden Orchard, a Forest, and an Extract, and passes to Bryce. Bryce untaps, rolls for Crypt, takes 3 damage, draws a card, and pays 7 mana to cast Holebreaker Horror. Ben draws from Rhystic, and Bryce uses his Shaman to exile Ben's Gemstone Caverns for a blue. Bryce casts Dramatic Reversal. Triggering the Horror's ability, he targets his own mana crypt to be returned to his hand. Carlos taps all of his artifacts to pay for Muddle the Mixture, targeting Dramatic Reversal, doesn't pay for Rhystic, Ben draws, Dramatic Reversal is countered, and Ben responds to the Horror's ability by casting Silence. Bryce is unable to do the infinite mana loop because he can no longer cast any spells this turn, so he passes the turn. Carlos untaps and rolls for Crypt, not taking any damage. He loses one life from the tapped mana Crypt, gains one life from Inventor's Fair. Draws for turn. He plays an island and casts Tide Spout Tyrant, and then taps his artifacts with Urza's ability to play Copy Artifact, making a copy of Mana Vault. Ben responds to the cast with a Chain of Vapor targeting the Tide Spout Tyrant. The Tide Spout is bounced to Carlos's hand, and he sacrifices an island to copy the spell targeting Najila. Matthias counters the copy with Mental Misstep. Ben draws for all the past spells. Carlos bounces Mana Crypt from the Tide Spout's cast trigger, and the copy artifact resolves. Carlos passes the turn. Matthias untaps and draws and plays Chrome Mox, imprinting Imperial Seal, and rolls for Crypt. Doesn't take any damage. He taps to cast Toski Bearer of Secrets and moves to combat. He attacks Ben with seven Warrior Tokens and Najila, and Ben's Gilded Drake. He gets seven more Warrior Tokens attacking Ben, and Ben dies to combat damage. Matthias then casts Dockside Extortionist and collects 10 treasure tokens. He uses one treasure to cast Red Elemental Blast, destroying the Holebreaker Horror. He then casts Ranger Captain of Eos. 
and finds Esper Sentinel. The players remember Opposition Agent returns to Matthias after Ben's death. He then casts Esper Sentinel for one treasure. He casts Jeweled Lotus and discards to hand size and passes the turn. Bryce untaps and leaves Mana Vault tapped, taking one damage. He draws and plays Mox, Opal, and Mana Crypt, and then taps for four to use Tasker's ability to mill two cards and have an opponent return a card to Bryce's hand from his graveyard. Carlos selects Windfall. Bryce then taps for two and exiles Carlos's island with his Deathrite Shaman to get one mana to cast Windfall. Matias casts an Offer You Can't Refuse, targeting Windfall, countering the spell. Bryce then plays a Demir Signet, goes to combat, sends the 2-2 bird at Matias for two flying damage. It connects and he passes the turn. Carlos untaps, gains one life from Inventor's Fair, Loses one for Mana Vault. Also during his upkeep, pays one to look at the top three cards of his library using the Sensi's Divining Top, and then draws for turn. He pays five to cast Tezzeret the Seeker, and Matthias exiles Mystical Tutor to cast Force of Will for free, countering the spell. Bryce activates Tassiger in response, getting Mental Misstep. Carlos casts Mana Crypt and activates Urza's second ability, getting Tempted by the Arik. For each opponent, gain control of up to one target creature or planeswalker that player controls, with mana value 3 or less. He targets Najila and Deathrite Shaman. Matthias responds with Dovin's Veto, countering the spell. Carlos plays an island, looks at the top 3 cards of his deck once more with the Sensei's Divining Top, and then passes the turn. Matthias untaps and draws and moves to combat. He attacks Bryce with his Warriors for a total of 26 damage after the Najila trigger, and draws 26 cards from Toski. He then uses Najila's ability to untap all attacking creatures in an additional combat phase, attacks Carlos uh, for lethal combat damage, and wins the game. Congrats, Matthias. I have to say, CEDH is EDH. That second game had everything you want in a commander game. Everyone had a chance to do their thing, and the game ended because of combat damage. CEDH has its differences, but it still is a great time all around, and again, CEDH is EDH. Well, what did you think of our narrated game? Did you miss our banter back and forth, or did you like how straightforward this game was? Let me know down in the comments below. I'll read every comment. Really love to know what you think. While you're down there, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Uh, it means a lot to us. Thanks again to our awesome patron, Matthias. If you want to be featured in a game like this, consider becoming one of our patrons over at patreon.com slash kingdoms TV. Speaking of which, a big shout out to our two king patrons, Jordan Ritchie and Worthy Glover. You both rule. Also, our awesome samurai patrons are Brian Halicki, Chandler Carlisle, Chris Crowley, Jason Gardner, Matias Salazar, Morton Christensen, and Revolution Gaming. You are all the pillars of kingdoms. If you made it this far, as always, thanks so much for watching, and remember, keep it nerdy.